Hello again everybody and welcome to another edition of On The Range. And today once again we're in the A10C Warthog and we're going to go over one of the core concepts behind employing the A10 and that's the sensor of interest, SOY, which you'll sometimes hear pronounced SOY. Now in the A10 you have a number of different sensors and a number of different systems that you're going to be using to employ weapons, search for targets, maintain situational awareness, navigate, you name it but you only have a limited number of controls to interact with all these systems specifically talking about controls on your stick and throttle, your HOTAS controls so how with all these different systems and a limited number of ways of interacting with them do you control them all? and that's where the sensor of interest comes into play now by default the HUD is the sensor of interest so that means that when I use the controls on my HOTAS it's going to be affecting the HUD. So as an example right now, I'm using the slew control on my right hand throttle to slew the cursor, the TDC on the HUD around. And you can see that as I do that, that I have a similar cursor on my TAD, I have another, you know, I have my targeting pod that uses that same control to slew around. But since my HUD is the center of interest, as you can tell by the asterisk right there on the left side, only the cursor in the HUD is being affected. So if I wanted to use the tactical awareness display, the TAD, TAD, and, and slew the cursor using that same control, I would have to make the TAD my sensor of interest. So I mean, in a nutshell, that's the entire concept. Um, it's just something that if you're not used to this sort of thing, it can take a little bit of, get, of getting used to, and you might not understand why if you do something you know at one time and it works why it's not working when you try it again at a different time and that's just how the sensor of interest works so now the next question is well okay by default the HUD is the sensor of interest how do I make these other sensors the sensor of interest so that I can manipulate them so there are a couple of different ways I'll show you the easy one first and this is actually the technique that I never find myself using but with the tactical awareness display uh, for example selected and highlighted if I select that OSB one more time then that makes the tactical awareness display the sensor of interest or soy and you can tell that's the sensor of interest by the green box around the display so my HUD is no longer sensor of interest so if I try to manipulate controls or do anything that I would normally want to do with a HUD um, you know step to the next steer point or you know whatever the controls that I would use at the HUD with sensor of interest no longer work but the controls that I want to use for my tactical awareness display do work. So you can see that I'm slowing my cursor around. I can use my DMS on my stick to uh, to uh, do the scale on the display. So now the HOTAS controls work in the way that I would expect. So conversely, if I wanted to come over here to the targeting pod, I see that I have my targeting pod already called up and selected, highlighted. I had to press that OSB one more time, and my targeting pod is now the sensor of interest and I can slew the pod using the controls, I can zoom in and out using the DMS, I can uh, manipulate uh, designated speed based on where my uh, targeting pod is pointed using my TMS, I can do everything that I would need to do with the HUD using the same controls or again I said HUD with the targeting pod <laughs> using the same controls and the other one where this comes into play is the AGM-65 Maverick so uh, right now you see that the bounding box or whatever the uh, correct term for that is, the box around the display is selected so my Maverick is the sensor of interest. So that's one way of switching between it. The other way, and this is the way that I find myself using more often, is to use a HOTAS control and it's the coolie hat. It's the right hand button right there on your right throttle, or at least it's called the coolie hat in the uh, A10C flight manual that comes with DCS. I can use it to switch between sensor of interest. So if I go hat up short, momentarily just uh, move it to the up position, that makes my HUD sensor of interest, as you can see by the asterisk. If I go hat left long, in other words, if I hold the hat to the left position for about a half second, so left long, that makes whatever I have called up on my left MPCD or MFCD, whatever it's actually called. I'm uh, just having a, <laughs> having a difficult time on this one for some reason. Uh, that makes the left hand display the sensor of interest. If I go hat right log, that makes the right hand display sensor of interest. So there's the Maverick 
And if I go back to the left and with the targeting pod called up, do the same thing. That makes the targeting pod sensor of interest. So it's just up short for the HUD, left long for the left display, right long for the right display. And that's how I, during missions, you know, without having to reach up for the mouse and click buttons, I can just do that using the control that I have mapped on my throttle. So that's the core concept behind the soy sensor of interest and it's an important concept but it's I think you can see that it's very very simple okay so I will end the mission by showing a practical application of the sensor of interest and I'm going to release a couple of Mark 82's so let me come down here to my Dismas select the 82's I will edit this profile slightly I'll go with single ripple single I'll ripple off two of them and I'll make the spacing 30 feet Okay, save, status, and let me go back to the tab. Okay, so right now my HUD is my sensor of interest. So right now with my slew controls, I'm moving the cursor around, looking for a good target out there in the distance, but it's so far out that I don't really want to be using my HUD right now. I want to be using my targeting pod to look for targets. So I will make my targeting pod sensor of interest, and now I'm slewing around, looking for targets in the pod, and I see something that looks good out there in the distance. I've got, oh, what would you be? A couple of, are these trucks? Yes, you are. So let me track on these. So I just switched to, you know, a different sensor that is, you know, going to put me in an event at an advantage when it comes to finding targets. So you always just pick the one that's going to work for you at the time. So let me go master arm to arm and get lined up for a run on, these, on this target. Okay, so coming back around and we go to CCRP release mode, picking up steering cues now. Still got the target out there in the distance. I'm going to move it around to uh, stay a little bit unpredictable and come around here to the right so that I'm not overflying the enemy locations. They're going to be shooting back at me and come in from a smart angle on this one. I'll release in a more or less level delivery, about 4,400 feet above sea level. Okay, so coming back around, about 10 degrees to go, looks like about 18, 17 seconds to release. So continuing to track the target on the targeting pod. Okay, 8 seconds, depress and hold the weapons release switch. And just tracking it right down the line, 2, 1, 0, depress and hold until both bombs are away. And let's exit the area and see how this does. So we'll go wide field of view and zoom out a little bit so we can see the impact. Okay, two, one, impact, okay. So there you go, that's a good way to end the mission. It's a practical application of the sensor of interest in action. So, if you did enjoy the video, please do consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like, leaving a comment in the comment section below. It sure does help out a lot, and I will see you next time.